I'm down in Surrey to meet a chap called Neville who has got about four sheds like this with his car stash in. And this is fascinating because he's really into Mercs from the 80s and the 90s and specifically niche tuned cars, lesser seen versions of these vehicles. And we've got a lot of cars to talk about today. I can't wait. There's also a smattering of American muscle and hot roddy stuff because that's what started Neville's obsession with cars. So without further ado, let's crack on with a car cave episode of The Late Break Show. I'm Johnny Smith. Right, I know what I want to ask you about this. I mean, I've had a couple of one, two, four estates. I love them. What is auto fashion factory spirit? That's what I want to know what that is. I've seen it here. I've seen it there. What's the deal? So auto fashion factory were a tuner uh, and are a tuner still going to this day, um, based in Nagoya in uh, Tokyo or on the outskirts of Tokyo. Um, started in the sort of late 90s, specialising in um, W124s. Really? Putting, okay. putting heavy emphasis on um, E60 conversions, essentially. I, I started getting into, uh, with the AMG connection, or all the, um, the Japanese tuning magazines, and, and these guys continually would surface to the top and, and inspire um, conversions because they take conversions to a different limit. You, you're looking at this one which is a 36, well it's not actually a 36, it's a 320T. Okay. Uh, and um, I have a sister E50 or E6, E50, E500 sorry, limited over yep. there which we'll look at a bit later um, and I've done these as essentially as tribute cars okay. taking the inspiration from what the Auto Fashion Factory did. Yeah the minor modifications, and this one's a work in progress currently. As you can see, the interior is pretty much there. The interior is spectacular. Actually has an E60 limited um, central console, which is very rare and very valuable. I've never seen so many adjustable um, positions on Recaro seats. Yeah, a nice set of, uh, of Recaros Seriously. in there. They were added, uh, steering wheel was added, and um, then, We've done a few. We've done a few mods. The wheels put a, an AMG suspension on it. Shocks and springs all correct. Um, rear exhaust, obviously. And then the general idea. The next stage will be to wide body it. Really? Um, okay. And put a wide body kit on it. We have a set of uh, AMG uh, front wings in fiberglass, which came from Japan specifically for it. Really. And it's well. a case of trying to find a set of sills, probably. E500 sills, and then the rear will be custom built. Uh, probably English wheel, the arches, and roll of them. Yeah. So they'll, they'll look rather nice. And then we're sort of there, really, with this one. It's all very Japanese tuning spec, complete with, with the mad stickers. I was going to say, there's loads of stickers everywhere and, I look. There's um, loads. That's what they do. You know, you name it, they made a sticker for it. <laughs> and uh, some of the stickers you just couldn't even believe. It was completely bonkers. And so... I took great, uh, uh, great pleasure in sort of putting them in the right places, following the magazine articles, and, and I think I've built a, a pretty good pair of tribute cars. I think, yeah. And you collect the literature as well? I do, I do. Now, Neville, 190E, one of quite a few that you own. So this, this is a Cosworth? This is a Cosworth with a Moserman single turbo conversion, oh. which makes it incredibly quick. So as you can see, massive turbo on the left. Um, yeah. Which was on the car when I bought it. And that was the main reason for buying it, as the general idea for this one was to do a wide body conversion uh, to a 190E spec. And um, I thought it would make a great engine, hence why I managed to find the, the power pack emblem in it the is. middle, which is nothing more than uh, than a, um, an AMG uh, pointer, but it is real and it is cast iron and it's quite a rare piece. They, I think they did those on the Evo 2 
as a, for a few options. Yeah, um, absolutely love the interior on this. It's yeah, it's lovely. I have a pair of Recaro classics with the dog tooth or hound tooth, whatever that particular insert is, yeah. which I thought would have looked rather nice in there. And, the back seats, um, those separate buckets look yeah, amazing. Yeah, yeah, very, very good. I think they were Recaros. They're all Recaros. I but, reckon uh, they are. Made specifically for uh, Mercedes. But um, manual, manual. So yeah, manual. I'm not a great fan of manuals. Um, to be honest, it's probably another thing that put me off. But I must be honest: when you drive a manual in with a, with the turbo, it's it's a better yeah, it's a better thing. Now, hang on, is this another 190? It is, isn't it? This or is just... a 190 yeah. two point six. Yeah. Um, converted by Matty Charlesworth, five star automotive, as was as maybe still uh, down in Bristol. He built the car. Um, it came uh, from Kent, built for a lady. Lovely interior, AMG genuine kit. And then I managed to find a brand new boxed suspension system for her. So AMG shocks and springs really? are on this one. Um, Momo steering wheel. I was gonna say, I'm looking at, there's a brace of boost gauges and all other on the passenger footwell. Yeah, so they relate to um, what's going on to what you're going to find under the bonnet, which Sorry. was a um, conversion that was undertaken using a Hughes of Beaconsfield turbo kit that we had. Um, oh, yes. We bought all the last spares from Hughes um, as they were clearing out and including a few turbos, uh, exhausts, and um, one was basically trial fitted. To this car i mean it was it was quite quite difficult and we we did two of them so whatever we made for one was made for a second one yeah including yeah. this once it was finished it was taken to jan speed you may remember yes and then set up on the rolling road and they made an exhaust bespoke for it from the turbos back this must uh, be quick it was quick and and you know what i've only driven it once that's the the weird thing and and it was quite yeah ferocious but the trouble is I think that one was far more set up better and, and working better. This is still a, um, a, a sort of a to finalize yeah. uh, scenario, but she's, she's off and running and, and working and operating well. I've got a set of AMG split rims to go on her as a final sort of finishing um, part, although it's got a pair of AMG wheels on at the moment. I was gonna say, but she's all there. I was going to say, all... it looks really good. Now, before we go too far, obviously, everywhere you look on, in all of your sheds, there's just the mother of all stashes of 80s, 90s, AMG, Brabus. It's yeah, phenomenal. I, I, I've been collecting this for... How long? I've got to say tw 15, 20 years. I can't, I can't remember. It's got to be 20 years. And stuff that was readily available then yeah. has now dried to a drip. So you sort of inadvertently stockpiled? I sort of inadvertently stockpiled. I langbanked. <laughs> <laughs> but of course, with all the projects, it's been very useful because it's enabled me to finish things, see particular cars where, say, engine conversions have been done already, the hard bit, as I like to call it. Yeah. And you then bring her back and put, you know, whatever you want on them and try and build them up. And, and that's the beauty. I mean, I've got a lot of kits here that will finish, you know, a wide body SEC, a wide body 124. Um, these wings that's a 190 here. wide body, brand new. Wow. Oh, yeah, 190 wide body. If you look to the right, Johnny, you'll see the two Lorenza. Well, yeah, you've got the Stratton shock new absorbers. Old, new old stock. New old stock and all the AMG Bilstein shock absorbers beneath. Bloody hell. You People got... in the know will know all the springs, yeah. Carlson, AMG. But, it's um, it's yeah. seriously impressive. Okay, so not a Mercedes, clearly. A Trans Am, a very, very, a very muscly muscle car, 455 high output. Correct. Shaker hood. Shaker hood. Yeah. So what's the story here then? So there was quite a few brought over to this country. So you would yeah. see them in shows like Shoestring and, 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 you know, that was my interest. Gumball Rally, uh, Gumball, the original one. And, and, yeah. and so it was an instant love. And, you know, with this, with a Jensen Interceptor, 
that was my world. That's all I was interested in. That's all I ever wanted. Jensen Interceptor. Jensen Interceptor, yeah. That came before this. Um, so you had one? I had one. I've had two. Have you? Best day selling the... Uh, buying the first one and then uh, the best day was selling the second one. Oh, really? I think, I think, you know, what do they say? Never go twice. Yeah. I, I have had this for quite a few years um, and uh, it's always had a little bit of a clutch problem and no one's really been able to sort it out. But she is ferocious, only wants to be driven flat out, straight. And it's, it's what I call a drama car. It is a drama, it is a drama car. car. It's larger than life. It's, it's manual. We took it to the Red Hill Cruise this year, which is organised by Dream Cars. They do that annually. Yeah. And we were sort of uh, juddering, <laughs> juddering around Red Hill in it, uh, which is the best way to describe it. We sort of did the evening and got home, and that's about it, really. It, it's How long not have you the, had it? Have you had this a long I've time? I've had it since early 2000s. And I had to jump on the bandwagon because they were starting to increase in value. Yeah. And much as I didn't want a manual, uh, I had to go manual because that's all that was out there. And um, that's not but, a bad yeah. thing now. It's, uh, now it's not a bad thing because it's no. far rarer. It is. And it's what they all want in America, quite frankly. It is. You forget how aerodynamic this era was. No but gutters, nothing. Ducktail here. This was all. Um, it's a proper circuit race car, isn't it? It is. Yeah. And uh, I'm, you know, I mean, Robin. Uh, Gray of Auto Pontiac, based over in West London, races one of these in a in a sort of a '78 guys, a black one, and I've seen that go around Brands Hatch, and it's phenomenal. So you can modify them, and you can get them to handle yeah. around a track, and it's something. Should I decide to keep this one, um, I would like to move forward with. Apart from getting the clutch problem done, yeah, it would be really really nice. Uh, but she's noisy, she's loud, and as I said, when you it's put cool. the foot down, it's just just go thump straight back in the seat big and block, off you go. Big block manual. It's pretty cool, Nev. Yeah. It's pretty cool. When did you own your Interceptor? Uh, I was 18 years old. and um, You were I, 18 and you had a Jensen Interceptor? Yeah, I could, a I, cool. I, I, I could afford to insure it through, and I'm going to name drop Norwich Union. Thank you for that, because they would allow you to put on your mini policy a three-month edition to enable you to drive any car. What? And uh, so... When we were at college, we had it a couple of times. We had a bit of fun with it, and uh, it was beautiful. I loved it. It was it, it was a, a high compression Interceptor, so it was a 7.2 with the high compression engine in, and it just drove lovely. Yeah. Um, nothing like this, and I, I just loved it. And then I, I had a little, should we just say, a little incident, and um, was never going to be able to insure it again. So right, we had okay, to okay. part company, right. and that was, uh, that was the end of it. And uh, so it went, and it's still around, though still around and it's it was a uh, uh, tax last year so crumbs okay whoever Sorry. owns knack 14m there you go that's the uh that's the car and i think it's down in um essex somewhere it certainly was anyway uh where it is now i don't know now i'm seeing color-coded pentas body skirts curtains in the back blacked out trim such a big car. I mean, it looks big next to that, and that's a big car. It's a beautiful car. Um, I got a phone call uh, from my perennial car searcher advising me of this car sitting in a, uh, an underground car park in Fulham, the owner needing to move to Egypt, his father who died wanting to sell this car, and it sort of brought back memories of a car that I used to chase up in um, Bryanston Square, I would see this chap driving this burgundy and then sort of peg after him, stop, pull him at a stoplight and start chatting to him about it. Yeah. And turned out to be the same car. Oh, really? And uh, the guy had, had died, sadly, the dad, if you like, and the son um, was, was selling it. Oh, my God. Did he leave his phone in there? <laughs> it's got a bloody telephone. Uh, <laughs> So, um, the first mobile phone for a car. We, <laughs> we, we, we picked it up, we got it running. She elevated, which was good. Got it to American Auto Parts, my garage, who work on things for me. And um, the gearbox gave up. And that was to be a fun and games drama for this car because the gearbox has been in and out of this car about four or five times. Gosh. But we got there in the end with it. Uh, new. I 
gearbox governor and we're running and the rest is history, as they say. So oh, we've gone through it front to back. It's great. I've Standard engine. Uh, we did check to see whether it had the AMG cams. Sadly, it didn't. Okay. But, uh, you know, looks it is in what good it shape, is. Though. This thing looks yeah, in good shape. Yeah, it's a nice, nice engine. It's not, not done many miles. She's all running. There's the uh, hydraulic lift up. So you pull, pull a choke and it ah, there, right. lifts, lifts the car up and you drop the choke and it drops her down. So it looks quite good. You can sort of do your own leveling. So you can't put an AMG suspension on this. Right, That's okay. the only downside. Okay. Uh, because it is all hydraulic. And you've, um, you've got others though, haven't you? I've, yeah, I've got others. So. Talking of which, let's go to another shed. Okay. Now, although this is a car cave episode of The Late Break Show, here at Neville's, we ended up filming on the same day, a barn find episode. Because in here is an exceptionally cool Mercedes, probably his coolest, I think, that hadn't been started or used in about 20 years, and it's all dusty. And he said, oh, do you want to help me maybe see if we can get it washed and started? And I said, hell yeah. But I won't put it in this episode. If it's already gone out, I'll put it above my head now. If not, keep an eye on our social media on The Late Break Show and you'll find out all about it. But rest assured, it's wide bodied, it's 80s, it's fat. Now look at these two, red and gold. They look amazing, these 190s. This one first then, Nev. So, Brabus, or Brabus evoca evocation. Ev evocation, is that the correct word? Um, <gasps> this was my first uh, car, my first foray into the Mercedes world. Oh, was um, it? And it was just a standard 192.6. And it went through my wife, my business partner, um, back to me. Didn't know what to do with it. So we had started collecting Brabus parts and um, we built a, a, a 192.6 Brabus, for want of a better word. So you've had it a long time? I've had it since I was 26. Gosh, okay. So okay. 32 years. Wow. Uh, so we, we basically front spoiler, correct shocks and springs, yeah. the runner blocks, the wheels you can see. We had all the wood which I'd collected, I taken to uh, Silvercrest over in uh, West London, who are brilliant wood refinishers. They did it all in the Brabus style, following the catalogue with it's the Zebra, uh, light Zebrano, that is. Light Looks good. It does look good. Um, Brabus pedals. Dial steering wheel and the rear spoiler. Yeah. Uh, I think she looks good. It looks stunning. We did the, the lower cladding in red, make it very bright. De-chrome the front so we don't have a star on the uh, grill. Yeah. And uh, what's going on under there? If you open up, we put some sort of traditional yellow Brabus um, oh, yeah. plug leads, an AB3 Brabus uh, rocker cover, which depicts um, mild cam tuning. How did you get into the whole Merc thing? This uh, I got basically I got in through a good friend of mine called Talbir Baines, who who basically inspired me on the uh, the Mercedes SEC and the SEL. Uh, he was my main form of inspiration and, and taught me an awful lot uh, and was a, a good supplier of parts, to be honest. Uh, so if I needed something. And uh, so that's how it started, really. Neville has reduced his collection. He used to have like 40 Mercedes. Yeah, I did. I got to 40 at one point, but it was, a, it was too much. That's, was, that's uh, bad, isn't it? It was a bit out of control. That is out of control. How many you got now? Like nearly 20? We're down to 20, yeah. We're getting lot. there, we're getting there. This is so gold, gold penters. Found this in Germany. Wow. A friend of mine drove to Germany, picked it up, brought it back. Uh, wheels were buckled. So those are replacement penters because like a lot of penters, they don't, they don't like life. Right. So that was hard enough trying to find a set of uh, correct penters. It's got the correct wide body on steering wheel gauges, and uh, she's lowered with AMG shocks and springs. It is a full-on genuine wide body. I was um, going to say, I didn't notice the lip difference between these two. There's a bit two. of difference, and if you look at the back, of course they did them in metal and plastic at the back, so yep. if you look at my part stash, you can see an example of both. But um, this one, I think, is fiberglass on this, which is an early car, Right. so it probably would, would have been very, very l wide on the sill area, as you can probably see. Yeah. Rubber boot tail spoiler, really nice. Uh, very standard interior. 
And then, of course, the piece de resistance is the um, what's under the bonnet, as they say, because this has been fitted with a Moserman period turbo, which was done by Alex. A Moserman a mine single turbo. Basically, took this off a car that we um, that we found and uh, basically re-engineered it back, complete with the micro dynamics. Look at that turbo system management. So the last thing to do on this is to put an exhaust on it, and then we're ready to rock and roll. But this is this one's done, and and it's 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 very nice. That's cool. You know, ready to go. What's the story with this one? Ever this is obviously in progress. It's dusty. It was bought to do an AMG SEL, and then I found the unicorn of a full Brabus kit, which I'd been searching for. Uh, and then decided I'm going to go full on Brabus with it to go with the 190, the 124, which we'll look at, and this one. Um, so I went over to West London. It was a beautiful car, 50,000 miles on the clockish, and it was everything I needed. And then when I looked in the uh, glove box, I knew I had to have it. So the AA breakdown cover card, HRH Prince. Nawaf Abdulaziz. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so, so it was a Saudi embassy car. Yeah. Royal Highness. Wow. That's uh, a bit cool. One of the Arab princes. I presume used as for diplomatic purposes out of uh, Bartley Square. But it, it, it's it's a it's a nice backstory because I owned also owned his car, which was a a, a Gullwing. SEC, and it was exactly the same, uh, same you were, chap. You yeah. owned a Gullwing SEC? Oh. Yeah, sadly gone now, but uh, yeah, we owned uh, had that for a short while. Right, so... Albrecht Supercharger. Supercharger. Part nice. of a Moselman kit, I assume. Um, basically, it's what Brabus used back in the day, so... Huh. I managed to find a donor car that had that on. Right. So this is a 500, did you say? This is a 500 yeah. with the with the Moserman supercharger. So yeah. nice. Um, that's where we are with that one. Uh, we've got a little bit of work on that one to finish, but we're work in progress. Shed three. Shed three. I, I am just walking past that classic Range Rover, although it's obviously in, in progress, isn't it? It is, is that... yeah. I mean, that's uh, quite a rare piece. That's a Litchfield five litre. Um, Range Rover, built oh. by TVR Power, Dom Trickett, Alan Vernon Nash back in the day. Nice. And um, it's, uh, we're, we're currently basically rebuilding it because of the tin worm, okay. which we've discovered. But it's, uh, yeah, a very rare piece, got a lot of rare parts on it. Harvey Bailey handling kit, Tom Walkinshaw racing, shrouding and the roof spoiler. I saw the spoilers on the back there. So you right. name it, it's got it on it. It was sort of used as a bit of a test piece, I think. So, coupe, one, two, four, four door, saloon, one, two, four, both silver. So this is a one, two, four Brabus evocation. Uh, yep. Had a phone call from a chap in Germany who totaled his Brabus, literally. Really? All the parts came off, were shipped here. And uh, we and built just got transplanted up. onto this. Yeah, we, we, because this car originally came uh, as a uh, a Q car, so it was bog standard silver, yeah. lowered with a Sportline suspension. Yeah. But of course, it had what it had under the bonnet, which you'll see. Um, a quick look. This is a this is a genuine Hughes of Beaconsfield uh, twin turbo installation. Oh. And so it made the perfect car to add all the Brabus parts oh, yeah, to. turbos, yeah. So we, uh, we, we put the, uh, the Brabus body kit, the wheels, came across a genuine set of shocks and springs. The full exhaust system is all genuine Brabus, steering wheel, gear knob, you name it. It's yeah, the, there's uh, the plaque. door tread plates. Yeah, I'm seeing similar traits to the... the Which again is my... Auto Fashion Factory Tribute. Yeah. So this is an E500 Limited, uh, modified to a degree so that, well, we've got AMG split rims on a Wide body. We've got a wide body, which is standard. Yeah. Um, we've got AMG boot spoiler. We have other modifications inside 
and um, I've managed to track down a set of AMG E60 springs. We've got an a a AMG E60 airbox on it when you have a look under. Oh, hello. Hello. Yeah, so this is uh, another of, uh, of the um, Ultra Blue Leads AMG airbox. I mean, that was a, a, That's a lovely weapon. dream to find that was in, J in Japan. That's from an E60. We've got the, uh, the cross brace on there. The old uh, auto fashion factory stickers. <laughs> yeah. So and, I, uh, I get the impression that the, the, the thrill of the chase for you, finding the right like natty parts. Yes, it is. As I said, it was, it was doing a lot of research into what they used to do and sort of, I use the best term is uh, copying their, uh, their style and, and um, you know, it, chance to ever go to Japan. I'd love to go and see it. I'd love to go there. I'd love to see their uh, setup. I'm um, not sure how prevalent. They seem to have gone into Porsche Cayennes a lot now, but they're still, still involved. But the days of the E60 conversions and the 36 conversions have stopped from what I can work out. Yeah. And um, the cars are coming quite sought after, if you can find them. But uh, Yeah, but 381 yeah, so. PS, 580 Newton meters. I bet it's a pretty quick car, though. It's a lovely quick, yeah, it's five litre. I bet it's and, very And uh, goes really well. Next shed. This is an interesting car. I think yeah. I know what it is, but it's it's not standard, is it, in any shape or form? No, this is a, a, a Ford Zodiac Executive Mark IV, um, inspired right. uh, by a chap called John Payne, who used to work at Caterham Cars back in the day, and he used to roll around in a white lowered Mark IV Executive with a three-litre turbo nitrous. Uh, car with his buddy who had a Trans Am. You can see where it goes. So the, uh, hang on, this is you as a this is this your is me as a kid on my bike. <laughs> yeah, right. Going to look at the car park of Caterham cars because they all basically drove Yanks, all of them, uh, or a lot of them. Yeah. And uh, so in the car park, it was a veritable feast, and it was always good at four o'clock to go and have a little look around and dream, and then watch them as they used to drive home to Thornton Heath and wherever they lived. But basically, I always remember this car as a. As a, as a youngster and got in touch with John Payne through a friend of mine uh, and we talked about it and he gave me a few of the ideas on what he did and, and basically a chap called Dave Woodfield who's uh, anyone in the hot rodding world will know on the Zodiacs and Zephyrs basically built it for me from scratch. Uh, it's well, a not real from scratch, but 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 you know, put it put it together. The period stickers around it and stuff are amazing. So this is like a window into your world as a kid. Yeah, reading, reading Custom Car Magazine and Street Machine. Correct. Chelsea Cruise, I'm guessing. Never went on the Chelsea Cruise, funnily enough, but uh, would have loved to have gone. Yeah. And um, but yeah, these these were the sort of things that were there. I mean, I I, I found this in South London. Uh, Darren was the chap who owned it, and uh, met him and his mates in a lock-up and <laughs> engine had already been done, so he's got a 5.9 Chrysler. Oh, has it? Okay. Um, the hard work, as I call it. <clears throat> and then we basically did the rest of it. Um, essentially, it was very rusty, so it had to be rebuilt. It's got a 5.9, basically an AMX Javelin yeah. uh, engine. Yeah. Linked to a... Uh, Ford Mustang, is it C4 transmission? Would that make sense? Yeah, the auto, three speed and then it's auto. It's got a 3.1 um, Ka RS Capri rear diff linked to Audi Quattro brakes, would you believe? Really? On the rear, yeah, apparently so. I, I'm, I'm, I think Mer that's about right. Yeah, Mercury Cougar light clusters, they're great. Put some autometer gauges in, which you may have seen subtly behind the original. We've got a set of what I call Steve McQueen torque thrusts, I think they're called, yeah. aren't they? The, the ubiquitous. Mustang wheels sprayed in Aston Martin Pentland green, which I quite like. It's a great colour green. Saw that in High Park in uh, on one of their cars. Yeah, right. Another one, two, four. A a real AMG. A four hundred E. Right. Four point two uh, came from the Swiss Alps, oh. and uh, beautiful car. It is a beautiful car. Those rims are great. Really nice, and again. We've utilised some of our stuff. Yeah, the wide body lip kind of. They are Japanese lip. spec because they actually are fitted to the AMG spec um, 400E. And of course it has the 4.2 engine. 
This is great. Which is lovely anyway, it's a beautiful runner. Yeah, I was going to say, this might be my favourite 124 of yours, I don't know. It's, uh, it's all up and running and very nice and drives very, very well. Right, another shed. Got some great wooden sheds, I have to say. And you got a hot hatch. Yeah. GTI Engineering. So, Oak Green Mark II Golf GTI, great, great car. 16 valve nev? Yeah, 16 valve RE2000. So, um, breathed on engine by GTI Engineering, one of their options. You'll probably see the data plate on the front. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah, 29th of March 1990. Yeah. So, GTI Engineering were to Golf's what Stratton were to AMG. Yeah. Um, a concessionaire selling basically bits and bobs to add on to your golf to I remember, I remember the magazine ads with these weird front grills in. They used to sell a plethora of body kits, you know, Zender, Cami, yeah. all sorts. This has got an Aerotech body kit, quite rare. This was uh, the Aerotech, which was their own in-house built kit, which was done by a Lotus engineer, apparently. Well, so it's it. probably the rarest and I think the nicest. It's got a Zender front, which you've probably seen yeah. and I can't tell you what the rear is. I think that's a Zender rear spoiler. Um, so this is still being finished, this car? This is, yeah, we got so far with it um, and... You got distracted? <laughs> I got yeah. distracted, yeah, you know the scoff. We just need to uh, do a little bit of finishing on this one. They're all in the queue. It's been fantastic to watch uh, and listen to Nev's sort of life story in cars. I hope you've enjoyed this episode of uh, Car Caves on the Late Break Show. Everything from that, which is kind of where the car love started for Neville, up to just so many different combinations of 80s and 90s tune works. I've, I've actually learned a lot today. I really have. Very cool. I miss my 124 as well. If maybe you've got a car collection that you think is worthy of me coming to film, get in touch with us in the description. There's an email there. If you haven't already subscribed to the show, why not subscribe? Um, maybe you want to become a Patreon. I'll put the link in the description for that and you can view videos like this typically early and you'll get blogs from me a couple of times a week. That was a gunshot. It's time for me to go.